Welcome to What Catholics Believe. I'm your host, Julius Matoni. To many, it might come as a surprise that there is an, a very definite Catholic philosophy about education. That there have been many papal encyclicals devoted, in fact, to the subject of education. They govern the role of parents and children, particularly the role of the mother in the formation or education of our child. What do Catholics believe about education? To discuss this topic today, we have with us again Father Donald Sanborn. Father Sanborn, welcome to What Catholics Believe. Thank you. Uh, Father, what is Catholic education? What is the Catholic notion of education of youth? Well, it is much more than simply imparting a, a body of information to a child. Uh, when the Catholic Church uses the term education, it is talking about upbringing. That would be a better term. Formation of the child. The primary formation that it seeks to impart is a moral formation. That the child should learn how to be good. And so education starts the day after the child is born. You know, today when we read about education, it seems the whole emphasis on education is that the child or youth or even young adult or sometimes older adult should have a body of knowledge implanted in him so that he can perform a useful function for society, so that he may get a good job. How does this view correspond to the Catholic view? What is the Catholic reaction to this view? Uh, that that is not education at all, uh, that you could impart a great deal of knowledge to a, a young person and he would not be educated. He might be knowledgeable, but he's not educated. Uh, the, the moral training is the primary goal of Catholic education. And it begins, therefore, in the home. As a matter of fact, the primary place of Catholic education is the home. Uh, for it is there that all of the moral lessons are learned as very young children and it is the impression given by the home life that is much more important than the impression given by any other institution. What's the role then of the, the parents in the education of the child? They must teach the children to obey the laws of God essentially to uh, have piety, to say their prayers, to have charity, goodness in their actions, to act justly, uh, to uh, get good habits uh, with regard to first God, uh, then themselves, meaning the parents, then their brothers and sisters, their friends, uh, to be disciplined, to uh, be respectful, uh, to be neat and clean, to uh, do what they're told, uh, a anything that you would desire to see in a well-behaved child. Mm -hmm. That is the role of the parent. And the little baby is like clay in their hands. Mm -hmm. They have the capability of making him uh, into uh, a great saint, if they really wanted to, uh, or a great sinner. What is the role, most more particularly, of the mother in this process? Does the church actually assign a role to the mother? The uh, mother is the closest person to the child. Even though the father is the head of the house, the closest f formation will come from the mother. And therefore, the, the mother must herself have the virtues that she wants to impart to her child. Uh, if she wants her child to be respectful and obedient, she must also be respectful and obedient to her husband. She cannot expect her children to learn those virtues if she herself does not have them. Consequently, her model of virtue is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so you see then that through the mother of the family, the virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary would ultimately and ideally be implanted in the children. You know, this, uh, already we see that this Catholic notion of 
education has very far-reaching consequences which will grate against many of the fundamental notions held by Western society. For instance, you mentioned the Catholic woman, wife, must obey her husband. Now, this is, a, this is called considered heresy by our society. For instance, when uh, Lady Diana uh, married Prince Charles, she, in her vows, had struck the words, I will to obey, honor and obey, uh, and said, uh, I think, w w in, in spite, in, in, in place of honor, put respect mm -hmm. or something like this. And this idea that there is a hierarchy in the home is, is just, just, uh, just horrendous to, to the modern mind. Is, there is, though. What is the Catholic teaching on this? Is, is there a hierarchy in the home? Yes, that the father of the family uh, is the head of the house, uh, that he has authority over everyone else in the home. Not absolute authority, only God ultimately has absolute authority, but he has um, the authority to, to uh, make decisions concerning those things that pertain to the household and that the wife and the children are subject to him. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the church also teaches that husband and wife, that is, mother and father, are the representatives of God to their children, which means that they are wielding the authority of God to their children, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important. It is, it is not merely a relationship of, of big to small or, or grown up to child. It is, the, it is uh, one where the parent is wielding the authority of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the household is a little unit that reflects the order of heaven, the order of the authority of the Blessed Trinity over the, the saints and the angels. Uh, it, so it's, it's a beautiful so thing. So we see that, in other, that when people say that... Uh, the husband likes to lord it over his wife merely for purposes of self-aggrandizement. This is not the Catholic view. The husband, in a sense, is a deputy of God and has a certain deputed authority from God, and that one uh, respects this authority not because of his particular virtues, but from the fact that it comes directly from God. Yes, there is no greater advocate of the due limitation of authority than the Roman Catholic Church, because the Roman Catholic Church insists on the fact that all authority is ultimately answerable to God, and that it is limited by God according to the nature of, of what, what it is doing. There is no uh, possible abuse, at least in theory, of authority in the Catholic sense. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all defined. Uh, you were mentioning also, Father, and again, this what you mentioned will tie in with the far-reaching social consequences of this Catholic view of education, of the role of the mother, that she is the closest person to this child. Uh, just the other day, I was reading in the USA Today that over 50 percent, in fact, 51 percent of women, mothers, with children under the age of one work. And the percentage, I think, with, say, older children, three and above, is 70%. Now, I'm shooting off the top of my head. I can't substantiate this, but I think it's in the neighbor of 75 70%. Uh, what kind of a consequence does this have on the education of children, and what is the Catholic social view on this problem? Well, it means that we have a country of orphans. Uh, if the mothers are out of the home to, to that extent, that's the only way to characterize the country, that we have a country of orphans, and we have many orphanages, which are called in this day and age daycare centers. Mm -hmm. They are orphanages, though, mm -hmm. uh, because the mother is relinquishing her true function for another function, which is to make money. It is unfortunate that in many cases they are forced out of the home against their own will because their husbands have left them. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some innocent cases there. Mm -hmm. But it is also true that in many of these cases they themselves have left their husbands and must work, which would make them culpable. 
uh, if, in fact, they had no good reason uh, and, and they, that their separation was not approved by the church. Uh, and there are also many, many cases of the desire for more money that drives the woman out of the home, where you have two income families uh, because they want the bigger house, the bigger car, or the recreational vehicle, whatever. Uh, and the result is that their, their children are being trained by strangers. They're being educated by strangers and this, at the lower ages, is where the primary moral education is taking place, mm -hmm. the most important education. If you were a space physicist but didn't know how to live correctly, did not know how to go to heaven, your life is worthless. And conversely, if you knew nothing, if you could not read but you did know how to get to heaven, your life is worth everything. Father Samborn, you are involved in education yourself. You were formerly a rector of a seminary. As a pastor of a church, you have a school which is ultimately under your care. Uh, one issue which is often in the newspapers these days is the disciplining of children. And uh, many of us have seen totally uncontrollable infants, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, will scream at their parents. One parent might try to raise his hand and spank the child, and the other parent will say, no, I don't believe in spanking. Don't touch the child. You are inhibiting the child. Uh, we see the problem in the schools now of disciplining of children, of legal cases for a teacher striking a ch child, of, uh, of uh, the, the, the challenging of paddling rules. I remember when I was a kid in school, we'd get paddled if we were bad, and that was it. What's your, what's the Catholic view on the disciplining of the children, the attitude the child should have towards his teachers? The child should perceive his teacher in exactly the same way he perceives his parent. And therefore, the, and they do, naturally, and they will uh, treat the teacher the way they treat their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, a good child who has learned respect and obedience at home will naturally treat the teacher with respect and obedience. And good parents will uphold the rule of the teacher uh, as part of their own authority. It would only be in the most unusual and exceptional case that a parent would uh, ever take the side of the child against the teacher. It would have to be a, a case of some dreadful abuse that was obvious. But their, their normal attitude should always be uh, the teacher and the parent are one mm -hmm. with regard to the authority toward the child. Uh, the church has always uh, upheld uh, the use of corporal punishment in the correction of children. Uh, not, I would say, as the first resort. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas uh, refers to it. He says that with good children, it's sufficient to give them warning, monitions. Uh, you, you, you tell them what they should do when they do something wrong. But with unruly children, that you must resort to a, a certain form of force in order to, to make the message come home. Now, that does not mean that the church is in, in favor of child abuse or, or, or severe and brutal forms of punishment. It simply means that if a child does not learn by instruction that, uh, that he should learn by the association of the evil he has done with some due form of pain, mm -hmm. uh, and this is spanking. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but even that is of no use if the parents are not consistent in the way that they apply it uh, in the laws that they set down, in the observance of the laws they set down, consistency and constancy are cardinal elements in the raising of children. Mm -hmm. uh, switching to another area of this subject, Father, you've been uh, an outspoken critic of Vatican II. You have been very critical of the hierarchy and, and many of the bishops and priests of uh, the post-Vatican II Church. What can someone who tries to adhere to the traditions expect 
by, say, sending a child to a Catholic school in today's society, in the, a general Catholic school, what kind of a Catholic formation will he receive? From what I understand, uh, it is uh, no Catholic formation at all. It, it's uh, training in heresy. Uh, most children who go to Catholic schools come out uh, having lost the faith. Uh, I recently spoke to a young man uh, who um, uh, lives in Canada. Uh, he called me out of the blue and uh, talked to me about the changes in the church and all. And, and I said to him, how did you figure out that the new religion is not the Catholic faith? And he said, Father, when I was in school, and this is an, an average, what you would call an average Catholic school, uh, I had a catechism which told me that God was a butterfly and God was a rainbow. And he said, Father, after a while I just didn't believe in God. I said, he, he's telling me, he said, I couldn't believe that God was those things that they said. That couldn't be God. And he went like this for many years in a very confused state. And finally, in his early teens, he picked up his great-grandmother's prayer book from a hundred years ago and read the ordinary of the Mass and said to himself, this is the Catholic faith, this is the religion I want to be, and has persevered in that faith ever since. Uh, this is what they're getting in Catholic schools, and this is a direct result. Thank God he received the grace to pick up his, his grandmother's prayer book. But how many others like him think that God is a rainbow, or more precisely, identify God with the world, which is the, the message of those catechisms? Uh, it's a pantheistic idea. Does this problem extend uh, to the universities and run by Catholics and seminaries as well? Is someone like a Father Curran an anomaly, or is he more the, the, the norm? Uh, no, he is the norm. Uh, it is not an exaggeration to say at all that there is a complete abandonment of the Catholic faith in Catholic universities and seminaries. Mm -hmm. That's about the only way to put it. They are loaded with heresy, dripping with heresy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, apostasy in some cases. Uh, they, they, the Catholic faith is not found in those institutions. Mm -hmm. And this I know from speaking firsthand to people who are in them. Mm -hmm. um, the Charles Curran is just one example of many who are teaching those things and who hold those things. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Catholic schools. What about the public schools as we see them in the United States? What could a Catholic parent expect to happen to his child if he sends them to the public schools? And what is your view about the state of education in public schools, in the, the average public school? Uh, it's no secret that, that public schools are a complete disaster, uh, both from the moral point of view and from the uh, point of view of academics. From the moral point of view, all you have to do is ride by a, any public school in your neighborhood and see them come out about 2.30 or 3 o'clock and just get a look at them. Uh, look at their devil worship uh, jackets and, and look at their insane and sick hairdos and, and the crazy look on their faces and their impurity and the fact that they are dressed like slobs. Uh, they're sickening to look at. Uh, this is the youth of America. Uh, that's the training that you'll see. Uh, many of them are dangerous. Many of them are on drugs. Uh, the, 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 the schools are loaded with moral corruption. They're, 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 they're steeped in impurity and filth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their moral state. Mm -hmm. And in academics, it's a joke. I mean, you just laugh. Uh, I recently read that 17% uh, of this year's um, graduates could not read their high school diplomas. Uh, they are learning nothing. It, it is amazing that teachers are paid money to produce nothing in their students. Uh, it's probably the only profession that you can get away with that, that you don't have to produce a product, but you get paid money for it. Mm -hmm. And that uh, 
that there is even uh, an obligation to attend their classes. There's compulsory education up to 16 years old, but you learn nothing. You come out a complete ignoramus. And, uh, that th and then they raise the school taxes. There, there, are, there are billions of dollars spent on nothing, on air. Uh, and the, these, these, even the best of them can't spell, can't write an English paragraph, don't have the, the, the most fundamental and basic skills of knowledge mm -hmm. to get along in, the, in this world. <laughs> Uh, Father, speaking of public schools, uh, would the church say public there's something intrinsically wrong with public schools, or could government schools be very good schools? Uh, in a society that does not recognize the church as the one true church of, of God, uh, it, it would be perceived as an evil that the government would have the reins of education. It pertains to primarily the parents to educate their children and then to the church to aid the parents in the education of their children. So the institutions of education, therefore, should belong to the Catholic Church. Whenever you have a training being imparted by some institution that does not have the correct principles concerning the ultimate end of life, and certainly no secular government would have that. Uh, you have problems in education. You, you are, you're going to find humanism, you're going to find atheism, uh, you're going to find a, a, just a lack of training in the most important things, which is the ultimate end of life. So what as I said, you can learn everything else. What if the state did recognize the, the kingship of Christ and the Catholic religion is the one true religion? Under those conditions, would you see a possibility of government education being in accord with Catholic standards acceptable? In, still in that case, the, the role of education belongs to the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. uh, even if a government were the best government in the whole world, even, even if it were the government of St. Louis IX in France, uh, it's still the role of the Church. Uh, because you are dealing with the minds of men being ordered to ultimate things. Mm -hmm. That is the role of the church, not the role of government. The role of government is to keep peace and order in temporal affairs. This has to do not with temporal affairs, but with supernatural mm -hmm. affairs, primarily. How about the, this, again, this issue comes up. What about the idea of government aid, then, to parochial schools? Would you think there's anything wrong with that if there are no strings attached? Catholic school received money from a government? Whenever you receive money from anyone, there is an inherent dependence that is set up as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church should never be dependent on anything that, uh, on anything at all, because it is above all other institutions, but especially on something, some government or institution that does not share its beliefs. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, was done in, in times of Christendom, when, when the church was recognized as the true church, uh, was that the uh, government would uh, be responsible for the operation of these institutions, but the church would have full say. The government might build a, a university, uh, might maintain it, but the, the church operated it. Uh, you know, when I was uh, growing up, I was like very many other people, and perhaps even more so today, I was Catholic, and I was sent to a public school for reasons which still aren't entirely clear to me. Uh, what has been the view, especially in the United States, of the traditional view of the hierarchy of the requirements that a child of Catholic parents be sent to Catholic schools? It is a grave obligation of parents to send their children to Catholic schools. Uh, this was true even when public schools were quite tame, uh, where there was no blatant contradiction of Catholic principles, uh, no hostility toward Catholics or Catholic teaching in public schools. Mm -hmm. This was true that even then. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and the Council of Baltimore over a hundred years ago recommended that those parents who did not send their children to Catholic schools be refused communion. That's how serious it is. Uh, and uh, today, when the moral corruption is so grave uh, in public schools, uh, I don't see how any parent could send his child off to a, a public school. I would. I, mean, I, I don't see how it would be justifiable in any case. But could you perhaps, in closing, re uh, react to this statement? There are some who have an opportunity, and they can choose between a Catholic education, say, and a non-Catholic education, and they say, well, the Catholic education is a no-frills education. We want them to be exposed to the finer things in life. Therefore, we'll send them to the more uh, sophisticated public school or non-Catholic school. What would your reaction be to that? I would say that those people are on the verge of losing the faith, uh, that they consider this world more important than the next world, uh, which is the, the rotting out of the faith. The faith is naturally ordered to the next world, and therefore your priorities are of the next world. And so you would be much more interested that he know his catechism, he know his prayers, and all of the teachings of the church, than say that he have dancing right. or, or, or a great athletic program or, or something see, else. Where your heart is, there is your treasure. Yes. Father, we've run out of time.